Oh, howdy all, grab yourselves a beer, it is time for some Path of Exile discussion. Today I wanted to talk about two of the new lightning themed unique items that were revealed for patch 3.11 and the Harvest League. So these are Storm Secret, a topaz ring that is very heavily linked to the skill Herald of Thunder, and also Doriani's Prototype, which is a piece of unique armor that is an incredible build transforming item. So. Uh, these both relate to each other in that they're both related to dealing lightning damage, but uh, one of them requires only a small commitment to using it, uh, whereas the other requires a massive transformation of every design decision that you make in building your character. So Doriani's prototype is potentially the more powerful of the two items, but very few people will run it because it will impact your entire gear set. However, if you do choose to do this, if you make the necessary sacrifices to use this item, uh, you will be paid off. Fair warning, we don't know how rare these items will be. They might be easy to acquire by even a few days into the league, uh, like something like the Rolling Flames Cluster Jewel or Crown of the Inward Eye that drops all the time from Cyrus, or they might be expensive all league, like the Unique Jewel Unnatural Instinct, or they might be somewhere in between, like Chevron's Wrappings. Don't plan a build that is dependent upon one of these uniques unless you are very confident that you can acquire very rare and very expensive uniques. If it does turn out that they're more common at the more common end of the spectrum, then you can always change your build plans to accommodate that later. So firstly, let's talk about Storm Secret first. This one's flown a bit under the radar because Doriani's prototype is such a uh, transformative item that people have really ignored this one, and I think that's a mistake. Firstly, there's some variance in the roles on the item. So it's a topaz ring, it's going to have 20 to 30% uh, lightning resistance on it. Uh, for, for some users, you're actually going to want to get rid of that, and if the item was corrupted and gained a Vile Implicit, uh, you won't have to deal with that anymore. We'll talk about why in a sec. But uh, the intelligence varies. Uh, there's one screenshot that shows it at 20 and one at 30. Uh, the other screenshot comes from the Gaming Mag PC Invasion. Uh, the lightning damage varies from at least 25 to 30%, uh, chance to shock varies from 10 to 13 percent, and the frequency of Herald of Thunder hits uh, in is increased by 43 percent in the other version of this that's been seen. So 33 percent here, 43 percent on the other one. So uh, the other thing that uh, the other mod that seems might be variable is the 250 lightning damage you suffer when it hits an enemy, uh, at when your heralds hit an enemy and that is constant with both items. That doesn't mean it can't vary, uh, just that we haven't seen if it does. So, mechanics of Herald of Thunder are important to start with here. So, with Herald of Thunder normally, when you shock an enemy and then kill it, so you have killed an enemy that has already been shocked, then Herald of Thunder will give you a buff that lasts for six seconds, and this will fire lightning bolts at nearby enemies. Uh, these will deal damage to enemies uh, at up to once per 250 milliseconds, so four times a second uh, by default, and it can only strike the same enemy once per 400 milliseconds. In practice this means that if you're around one enemy, uh, you'll be zapping it once every 400 milliseconds. If you're around two or more enemies, then you'll be zapping something every 250 milliseconds, so four total zaps per second, uh, but they'll be divided up between different enemies. Herald of Thunder does a lot of damage as well. Uh, it's also completely unable to shock, so this prevents it from any sort of chain reaction shenanigans, uh, so Herald of Thunder won't be able to contribute to that. It also gives you a bonus of uh, lightning damage to your attacks and spells, uh, and so it's something that's quite a strong gem, it's very popular to use, uh, but it gets amped up a lot by Storm Secret. So, what I assume uh, this changes to in conjunction with Storm Secret is that instead of getting one zap per 250 or 400 milliseconds, you'll instead get 1.33. So that means that it's essentially a 33% increase in your Herald's damage per second. But additionally, Herald of Thunder also creates a storm when you shock an enemy. This is huge. Uh, this means that you will be able to reliably have Herald of Thunder assist you in dealing damage against bosses because Herald of Thunder normally requires you to kill one enemy every six seconds to keep it up and that enemy needs to be shocked. With Storm Secret all you need to do is inflict a shock. So the way I see this working 
Uh, the default, I guess, level one use of this item is to inflict shocks with some other skill. And when you do so, uh, your Herald of Thunder will trigger and therefore that will continue to pummel enemies with lots and lots of damage. Uh, Herald of Thunder already can't shock, but it does quite a lot of damage and you can amp that up further with uh, support gems like added lightning damage or awakened added lightning damage once you're able to afford that later in the league. So I think that this is a really powerful item. Uh, for any build that is using Herald of Thunder, uh, you should definitely consider using Storm Secret. And I think that any build that's dealing large hits of lightning damage should definitely use this item. Uh, it looks really good. So that is the first, and that is the simpler of the two items. But Doriani's prototype is a total build transformer. So the first thing I want to point out is that nearby enemies have lightning resistance equal to yours. Nearby is an unconstant, uh, inconstant term within Path of Exile. Uh, in some cases, nearby means very close, and in other cases, it can be quite a large radius. Most, the most common nearby is fairly large. It's about the size of a Val Righteous Fire at maximum level, uh, so it does hit quite a bit of the screen, but not not the majority of the screen. But uh, it hits anything that seems like it's close to you on the screen. But we don't know for sure how big it's going to be. Now, this item is utterly transformative. Let's talk about the drawbacks first. Uh, you deal no non-lightning damage, okay? That's fine. This is all about scaling lightning damage. Uh, now, lightning resistance does not affect lightning damage taken. This means that your lightning resistance, as far as its ability to protect you from damage, is zero. That's really bad. There is another item that sets your resist to zero, Veil of the Night, and it is considered pretty much universally to be the worst unique item in the game. However, it also has this line, armor applies to lightning damage taken from hits. Now this means two things. Firstly, it only applies to lightning damage from hits. It doesn't apply to lightning damage that is dealt as damage over time. Uh, so for instance, part of the damage from the Shaper's Beam is lightning damage that you take over time. Uh, over time. So it's not going to provide any defense against things like that. Likewise, it's not going to provide any defense against the lightning damage that you suffer for wielding the unique wand Shamirin. Shamirin, Shimmerin, Shamirian, I'm not sure. Uh, but it's uh, not going to provide you with any resistance against lightning damage over time. Uh, however, your armor provides uh, armor applies to lightning damage taken from hits means that small hits of lightning damage will pretty much be laughed off if you have a decent amount of armor. And if you've got a massive amount of armor, uh, you can endure big lightning hits as well. So that's the drawbacks to Doriani's prototype. They're big. They're really, really big. Nearby enemies have lightning resistance equal to yours. Now keep in mind that you gain no benefit from lightning resistance, and so this means that you're probably going to want to use this with a minus 60% lightning resistance. And that's my, I guess, level 1 strategy for, for using Doriani's prototype. You're going to equip this item yourself, uh, and you're going to take various actions to stay alive. Some of the things that you can do in order to stay alive with the drawback of Doriani's prototype. The first one is to stack armor. And if you want to go down this route, Memory Vault is how you're going to do it. Memory Vault allows you to, in conjunction with a fair amount of, of mana, uh, Memory Vault enables you to gain armor equal to the amount of mana you reserve, and that scales really well. So what you want to do is take armor nodes on the passive tree, take mana nodes on the passive tree, uh, equip Memory Vault, and reserve quite a lot of auras. You want to reserve most of your mana, uh, leaving just enough to function. And then when you do this, you can get armor into the range of 30,000 without a granite flask and you know, 60,000 with a granite flask up. You can get higher than that as well with more investment, but that tends to be where I think people will cap out. So 30,000 with gra oh, without a granite, 60,000 with, something like that. Uh, and that would be, when I say a granite flask, that'll be a granite flask of iron skin. Alternately, uh, you may decide to take the node uh, iron reflexes on the passive tree as well. And if you do that, then you can use a jade flask of iron skin. It tends to be the one that gives the most overall returns then. So, 
that's the memory vault um that's the memory vault strategy and that al allows you to stack lots of armor and then if you take a big lightning damage hit uh you'll find that you'll be about as protected as you would be with 75 percent lightning resistance uh if you go further and scale your armor up to massive levels then you can make yourself almost immune to lightning damage uh, but that is, requires massive investment. The second strategy is to use Divine Flesh. Now Divine Flesh causes all damage taken to bypass Energy Shield, so you basically lose the main benefit of Energy Shield. However, for this, you will receive 10% to maximum Chaos Resistance and 50% of elemental damage taken as Chaos Damage. Divine Flesh is a powerful defensive layer because you can get your Chaos Resistance up to, you can actually get it to a cap of 90% now. Uh, with Divine Flesh and a couple of Cluster Jewels. And this should be quite viable in the new league to, uh, to get. Uh, you'll need to pick up Divine Flesh as soon as you can if you want to go down this route. Uh, and this requires getting one of the, uh, one of the, keys, uh, one of the uh, passive... No, uh, one of the uh, Timeless Jewels. The Glorious Vanity Timeless Jewel, the Vile one. Uh, which will t transform a section of your passive tree. And if it has the name, uh, if it has the name of uh, Javakwa on it, then it will add Divine Flesh onto your passive tree. So, this is one option that you've got. That covers 50% of the lightning damage, and it covers both hits and uh, damage over time. You'll then get the other 50% from an Avian Twins Talisman. Yes, we have a use for Talismans again. Uh, you create this by rolling up a non-influenced Talisman uh, and then taking it to Jorgen in research. Uh, you want Jorgen to be tier 2, and you will then have a chance of getting an Avian Twins Talisman. Uh, that will then be something that you can use that will convert even more of your lightning damage away from lightning. And the combination of these two things mean that you can comfortably sit on minus 60% lightning resistance and take absolutely no lightning damage because all of it is being transformed into other elements. So that's the second strategy that I... Oh, so that's the second thing that I think is worth thinking of uh, from a defensive point of view. So from a defensive point of view, you want to pick between either the Avian Twins Talisman and the Divine Flesh Root, or alternately, you could even use a Great Wolf Talisman, uh, the, which is the... The Eyes of the Great Wolf, which is the one that was originally Rigwald exclusive and now only drops from Divination cards. Uh, and this Talisman can, or can get a double strength Avian Twins Talisman mod on it. So, this will help keep you alive. Then your level 1 strategy for abusing this is to have minus 60% Lightning Resist. For bosses, this is equivalent to having 110% Elemental Penetration. And for Trash, it's equivalent to 80% Elemental Penetration. Awakened, uh, Awakened Lightning Penetration support is a great support gem for Lightning Damage skills, and it's only 42% Penetration. So imagine that you're getting two copies of that gem for free against Trash, and two and a half for bosses. That's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Uh, and it supports all your Lightning skills. And that's the payoff for, for going to, through all of the hoops to equip Doriani's prototype. But we can do better. The level 2 strategy is to have an animated guardian wearing Doriani's prototype. Now, animated guardians are a minion that you can equip items to, and they function as though they're wearing that item. So that means that any enemy near the Doriani's prototype, um, uh, uh, the Doriani's prototype guardian, uh, animated guardian, will have this aura that causes it to uh, have its lightning resistance reduced to be equal to that of the animated guardian. The animated guardian will not be at, will not be at minus 60 percent though. Uh, I believe that they by default have 20 percent uh, resistance and so you're just not getting as much of a benefit here. Additionally I'm expecting this item to be rare and animated guardians have a very big drawback and that is that when they die the item that was used, the items that were given to the Guardian are consumed and lost irrevocably. Uh, I expect that an animated Guardian, because they're pretty tanky, uh, one that's wearing Doriani's prototype will be fine until one particular accident happens, and that is that it gets hit by, it gets in the middle of a Heralds of the Obelisk Bloodlines pack uh, when that gets wiped out. And then all of a sudden uh, you'll have an enormous amount of Lightning Obelisks around it, 
And if one monster from that bloodline has survived, then those obelisks will last for some time. Firing off lightning skills, your animated guardian won't have the ability to get itself out of harm's way. And if you don't realize quickly enough to cast Convocation, it's gone. And so is your prototype. So for that reason, I, I'm open to being proven wrong, but I don't think that this level 2 strategy will be particularly great. The level 3 strategy, though, is where we get a little bit crazy. Uh, Shackles of the Wretched is a set of gloves that pose a real puzzle for players, because they are objectively bad to wear under normal circumstances. Uh, we have a quick read of these mods. Curses in this item are reflected back to you. What this means is that if any curse that is socketed inside Shackles of the Wretched is inflicted on an enemy, uh, you suffer it as well. This doesn't apply to blasphemy, but it does apply to most other ways of inflicting a curse. So, what we're going to do is use Shackles of the Wretched and in conjunction with Conductivity and Elemental Weakness, we want to curse ourselves. We want to inflict conductivity on enemies so that it bounces back onto ourselves, and we want to inflict elemental weakness on enemies so that it bounces back onto ourselves as well. We want to scale these curses as much as we possibly can, uh, at least as much as is reasonable to do. And it's my expectation you'll be able to get 150 to 180% increased effectiveness of these two curses, uh, and then apply them to yourself. This means that you're going to be taking that instead of having just 44% from a level 20 curse, but we're, we're talking higher budget potentially here, so we'll have a level 21 curse and a plus 2 Shackles of the Wretched. So we're looking at 47% uh, lightning resistance here and also 42% uh, to all res here. So we're going to be inflicting 99% uh, 99 lightning resistance penalty. And then that's going to be multiplied by about 2.7 because of all of our curse effectiveness that we can realistically stack. Uh, this means that we're going to be looking at having a lightning resistance value of about negative 300%. Uh, and then this means that monsters are going to take a staggering amount of damage from any lightning damage that we inflict. So if you go down this road, and this is going to have a few problems with it because you're going to have to overcome the massive resistance penalties that you're suffering from elemental weakness, you're going to be suffering to penalties to your cold and your fire resistance because of elemental weakness. Uh, so you have to, to overcome that. You also have to overcome the lightning, over, the lightning damage over time that you're going to take quadruple damage from as well. But if you can overcome these problems, then you're paid off by reducing the, say, the Shaper's elemental resistance to lightning from plus 50% to minus 300%. That is a massive eight times damage multiplier against the Shaper. But it gets even better because when you're dealing eight times as much damage with every lightning hit that you do to the Shaper, uh, you're much more likely to inflict not just a shock, but a severe shock on him. Uh, and so you may end up finding that you're getting nine, even nine and a half or 10 times the total damage. So this is a way uh, to think about Doriani's prototype. We really need to see more about the new league to be absolutely certain as to how we want to uh, build around this, but I hope that's given a few ideas. Anyways, if you've got any comments or questions, fire away below. Otherwise, leave it there. I hope you have a good one.